Hello everyone and welcome to Awesome Sharp channel and in this video I'm going to show you that how you can use change notifier. Change notifier in Flutter is a way to notify of changes to the UI so the UI can update itself with the latest changes. So let's go ahead and first take a look at the application. We have a web service and that web service goes to my custom uh, node API. It doesn't really return anything right now. There's nothing the API is returning. And once we return an array of objects, it's we are going to go ahead and JSON decode it. And then we are going to try to map it to the movie class that we have. This is our movie model. If you want to take a look at the actual API or the node, here is what it looks like. You can see it's not connected to the database or anything. We just have a movies array. And if we go to this particular route, which is slash movies, we are simply going to return the JSON representation of that particular empty array. Uh, later on, we will fill it up with some elements, but right now it's empty and that's perfectly fine. It's gonna work just fine. Okay, so let's get started. We have our web service over here, which already has a function called get all movies. But the question is, how and where are we going to call that particular function? Well, I'm going to go ahead and start using or creating the view model for this purpose. So I'm going to go ahead and create movie list view model dot dart. And this file will act as the view model for my application. All right, so let's get started with our view model. I'm going to go ahead and create a class and I will call it movie list view model. Great. And the another model that we are going to have, so the movie list view model will represent a screen which will display all the movies. I still need to create a view model that will represent individual movie. So I'm going to go ahead and create a movie view model. And inside the view movie view model, I'm going to go ahead and have access to the actual movie which in this case is the actual model. Let's go ahead and uh, go ahead and import the movie if we can. Let's first see what's going on over here, why it's not allowing us to import. Uh, let's go ahead and see what's going on. This is fine. And not sure why it's actually, movie is not initialized. Okay, movie is not initialized right now. So we're gonna go ahead and say movie view model. And in order to create a movie view model, you better pass in the movie. All right, there we go. Now we can actually import. In the movie view model, we are going to get access to the title of the movie. So I'm gonna go ahead and create a property, string get title, and we are going to simply return it from this.movie.title. Perfect. Now in the movie list view model, which represent all the movies being displayed on the view, we're going to go ahead and create a list of all the movies, which is movie view model, and it's represented by movies. And now I'm going to go ahead and create a function called fetch. Let's just return void. It's not going to return anything. Fetch all movies. Perfect. Inside the fetch all movies, we can actually go ahead and call web service dot get all movies. So basically we're getting all the movies. We're calling get all movies function, which is declared in the web service, which is this one. You can see that the web service is going to return you a future list of movie. So we, if we need to evaluate the future, we need to make sure that we are calling await over here. But we can't really call await unless the function is marked with async. So let's go ahead and put async also. And this is going to return us something. So let's go ahead and assign it to movies. Now this movies, if you check it out, this is a list of movie objects, meaning the domain models. Now you don't really want to send this to the UI because it may have business logic and all sort of stuff. So what we want to do is we need to somehow take these movies individually and map it to a movie view model. All right, now luckily our movie view model 
As you can see on line number 22, we can simply pass in the movie and create a movie view model. So this means we can iterate through it. So I can go over here and I can say movies.map and this is going to give me access to a individual movie and now I can call movie view model and passing in the movie which is movie. Perfect. And do, go ahead and call to list also and now we can assign it to this dot movies. Perfect. Now here's an interesting question that when we actually call fetch all movies how are we going to get notified that these movies have been downloaded? Because this thing over here, right here, is an async operation, meaning it is going to take some time to evaluate this to get this, and we're not even returning anything back. So this is a question that is answered by something called a change notifier. So I'm going to go ahead and say extends, and I'm going to use change notifier. So our movie list view model now extends change notifier, which means that once it gets the movies and it sets the property, which we are doing over here, we're setting the property, we can notify with the changes by calling notify listeners. This means that whoever is listening to the changes coming from the movie list view model, they will be notified and they can update themselves. Another thing that we have to do is we need to make sure that we are returning a future of void and not void because this function is marked with async. So we can't really return void, we should return future of void because eventually this function will be returning future. So now after setting the movies, we are calling notify listeners. But guess what? Nobody is listening. So now we need to make sure that whoever is listening gets access to the latest movies. So let's see how we can do that. So in order for this to work, what we need to do is we need to go to a particular component, like in this case, I'm going to main component, and we need to wrap the component who is interested in getting the values with the change notifier provider. So if I go ahead and say change uh, notifier provider, I can actually use that. Now, you will not see the change notifier provider popping up because for this to work, you have to install a provider package. So let me go to the pubspec.yaml file and you can see over here on line number 27, I have already installed the provider package. So if you install the provider package, you are going to get access to the change notifier provider. The change notifier provider takes in two different arguments that we need. We need a builder and we need a child. So let's go ahead and first type in the builder. We are going to get access to the context which we are ignoring. And what do we want to build? Well, we want to build a instance of a movie list view model. That's what we want to build. So there we go. And who is the child? Who will be the child who will get all of these changes? Well, it will be movie list page and all the child of movie list page. Now let's go ahead and go to the widgets and see what the problem is or where the problem is coming from. Let's go and jump into, well, there's nothing in the widget right now, I guess. Perfect. Okay, let's go ahead and refresh it and see what's going on. Okay, so nothing has changed. It still says movie will be displayed over here. And if I go to my movie list page, that is the one that's getting rendered. So this is the text that is getting displayed. So at this point, what do we want to do? Well, we obviously don't want to display, movies will be displayed over here, that doesn't make any sense. We want to display the actual movies, a list of movies. For this, I'm gonna go ahead and create a movie list widget. So I'm gonna go ahead and add a new file and I will call it movie list.dart. The purpose of the movie list widget is simply to populate or to give you a list of all the movies. So let's go ahead and see that how we can implement movie list widget. Movie list widget is actually pretty straightforward. You can see that it's gonna take in a movies, which is a list of movie view model as an argument. And then it's simply going to use the list view dot builder to display the movies. Perfect. Let's go back to our movie list page and instead of passing in the text, let's go ahead and replace it with movie list. But 
well, we don't really have access to any movies. Interesting, so how can we do that? All right, let's go back to text. The first thing we need is how do we access the actual movies? One thing that you have already seen in our view model is that our movie list view model extends change notifier. When we call the fetch all movies, then after getting the movies from the web service, it's going to set the public property this.movies to the actual movies, and then it will notify the subscribers. We have already made the change in our main.dart file, which we are saying that once the subscriber is notify listener is called, a copy of the movie list view model is given to the movie list page. But movie list page at this particular moment is not interested. You can see that we're using state and everything, but we're not really interested. We're not really doing anything over here. So now we can actually call the provider. There are multiple ways of doing the same thing. Um, I don't really like to call stuff like over here. Uh, I don't really like to call the these functions inside the movie list view model constructor initializer. So that's why I've created a separate function called fetch all movies. So the first thing I need to do is I need to use the provider dot off movie list view model passing in the context and the function finally. So in this case, we are going to call the function called fetch all movies. And we will also make sure that the second argument that we're going to pass in will be listen false. Basically, we are not keeping track of the changes. We're just trying to make this single call and that's it. So, all right. Now over here in our build, we can actually create our, the same thing, but in this way, in, we are going to just get access to the latest movies or the latest view model. So we're going to do that and we're going to also remove the listen. This means that any time the movie is updated or any time you call that, this is going to get updated. Now, once we have the view model, we can actually simply go ahead and send the movies. So I can say movie list and I can pass in the movies, which is vm view model dot movies. Perfect. Now let's go ahead and run it again. So you'll see that there is a problem. It's trying to complain that, well, first of all, there are no movies. It's trying to complain that. But if I even go over here and if I go ahead and add a movie, so which is an object, so I'm going to say title and movie, let's say is Batman and description. It's all hard-coded stuff. Batman movie, description. We don't even printing description, so it doesn't really matter. Okay. Now we go back and if I do a restart on the device, you'll see that it shows that error, but eventually it displays the Batman. And the problem with that error is that this error is saying that basically movies.length is undefined because movies is initially null. Because once we go over here to our view model, movies doesn't really have anything, it's empty. So now it's up to us. What should we do when the movies is empty? I think for us, we can display some sort of a progress indicator when it's fetching the movies. And once it is done, then we can replace it with the list view. So all of that can be done in the, the movie list page right over here. So I'm going to go ahead and create a function over here. I'm going to call this, well, this is going to return a widget. And I'm going to call this build UI. I'm going to take in a VM, uh, which will be a movie list view model. Okay, now we can actually do something. So if the movies are actually null, which means that they're still hopefully being loaded, then we can go ahead and return a new widget where it is an align widget with circular progress indicator. Perfect. Else, 
if well maybe there are no movies so if view model dot movies dot is empty meaning it's not null it's done but there are no movies then in that case we can also go ahead and return a a line and we can go ahead and say text uh, no movies found perfect so we got two cases over here and then the finally the final case is maybe the movies were found in this case we can actually go ahead and say movie list and passing in the movies which will be vm dot movies so we covered all of these three cases now we will go and replace the movie list page body with simply build ui passing in the vm already that's fine and let's go ahead and do a hard reset or a restart you can see it's loading and it loaded it was quick but let's go ahead and do it again i'm going to go ahead and try to load it you will see an indicator and it's loaded great now let's go ahead and try to remove all the movies so i'm going to go over here and i'm going to simply remove this movie so that we have nothing we are sending an array of empty nothing basically empty uh, empty array now i can go ahead and restart my device again and in this case you'll see that it comes out to be no movies found so all of those three conditions are working perfectly and we use our change notifier to notify when the movie is given to you or not so this all was created using the mvvm design pattern with flutter and we also use obviously the power of the change notifier which is available in the provider package from flutter so if you haven't used the change notifier i highly recommend that you do so because it makes your life a little bit more easier and if you're following the mvvm design pattern then it will be an essential part of your uh, whole architecture these videos and the new videos that i'll be working on is will be part of my flutter course which will be available soon meanwhile you can simply go to udemy and check out my other courses you can see i have a lot of courses on swift ui combined framework rx swift kotlin server side ar kit mvvm design pattern and a lot more so if you're interested and the best way to support my channel is to simply go to udemy and buy these courses now the best way to buy these courses is simply to take a look at the youtube description and you will find all the links simply click on the link and it will give you the best available price so that will really help thank you so much and if you have any questions let me know